An asthma attack is a signal that something serious has gone wrong and urgent action is needed. Of course, the attack must be treated. However, the underlying chronic asthma also needs to be managed to prevent further attacks. In fact, someone with well-controlled asthma should not have any attacks. So this podcast is intended mainly for doctors and nurses caring for patients, particularly in primary care. However, it will also be helpful for people with asthma. Now, before I continue, if you do find my podcasts helpful, then please do click the follow button so that you'll be alerted when new episodes are published. So today I'm going to talk about significant events in medicine. In particular, following on with the theme of the last few podcasts, I'm going to focus on asthma attacks, which in my view should be treated as significant events. Doctors practicing in the United Kingdom are obliged to report and reflect on significant events in their annual appraisals. Now, the UK General Medical Council defines a significant event as any unintended or unexpected event which could or did lead to harm of one or more patients. Now their definition goes further to state, this includes incidents which did not cause harm but could have done or where the event should have been prevented. So given that most asthma attacks are potentially preventable, and that asthma attacks can result in deaths, it follows that an asthma attack should be regarded as a significant event. And it follows that all of these events should be reflected upon by those caring for the person or the patient with subsequent action taken to prevent another attack. In podcast number 50, I spoke about a recent inquest where the coroner found that a 10-year-old boy had died from asthma. The death was classified as preventable by the coroner and had many preventable factors that we've known about for many years. The case was not unique. In the National Review of Asthma Deaths, which was called the NRAD, we learned that most asthma deaths in the UK are potentially preventable. We also know from many coroner's inquests subsequently that potentially preventable uh, deaths from asthma continue to occur. Now, for me, the tragic death of William Gray is the last straw. This is really a turning point, and urgent action is needed, particularly by general practitioners, to prevent another death from this chronic disease. We have known about the preventable factors for asthma attacks and deaths for nearly 60 years, and yet people continue to suffer from attacks and deaths. In the UK, the National Health Service, we have access to effective medication for asthma, and yet, according to the United Kingdom charity, the Lung and Asthma UK, asthma kills three people every day, and every 10 seconds, someone has a potentially life-threatening asthma attack. Now, asthma is a very common disease, From a recent study published in 2016, which involved detailed analysis of 27 databases um, 12 years ago, they concluded that about 1 in 10 people in the UK have asthma, and which in one year, between 2010 and 2012, accounted for at least 6.3 million primary care consultations, 93,000 hospital inpatient episodes and 1,800 intensive care unit episodes and 36,800 disability living allowance claims. Now, this was all in a one-year period. The paper was published by Mukherjee et al. in BMC Medicine in 2016, episode 14. So in my podcast, number 51, I suggested a seven-point plan for primary care to ensure that all asthma attacks are taken seriously and reflected upon. Please do have a listen to those two podcasts as well. So according to the General Medical Council definition, asthma attacks should be regarded as significant events because these can be harmful, and in fact they can and do cause deaths, 
and furthermore, that they can be prevented. Now, why is it important to consider these asthma attacks as significant events? The two main reasons being because an asthma attack means that something has gone wrong, which needs to be fixed. And secondly, because an asthma attack is a risk factor for a future attack. So if the factors that cause the current attack are dealt with, then a future attack and a possible death could be prevented. Now in the UK, there has been an incentivized process where doctors or trained nurses should do a post-attack review on all people who've had an attack within a few days. Now this review is intended to first establish whether the attack has resolved, and if not, what action needs to be taken. And secondly, and very important, the review also identifies modifiable risk factors which led to the attack and identifies aspects that need to be dealt with to prevent a future attack. So what's the problem that needs to be addressed? There are two issues really, and I'm talking mainly about the United Kingdom. The first issue is that most people who have asthma attacks do not get a post-attack review. In my experience, asthmas are treated like we treat acute illnesses, that is, attacks are treated and the person is sent home without a follow-up. We've seen in the NRAD and in the coroner's inquests that many people who die from asthma have had lots of attacks before they die. So these people have repeated attacks, most of which could have been prevented if modifiable risk factors were dealt with at a post-attack review. In one of the inquests I was expert witness in, a girl had 47 asthma attacks in her last five years of life before she died, just before her 14th birthday. And in another, a girl who died at age 10 had had 48 asthma attacks in her short life. And very few of these, in fact none in the one case, were followed up by a post-attack review. The second problem, and this is particularly a United Kingdom problem, is that asthma care is delegated to nurses, pharmacists and non-medically trained healthcare assistants. Now there's no problem with delegating care, but it does need to be delegated to people who are appropriately trained. And this is why I mentioned the latest General Medical Council advice. And this is the, the point really that doctors delegating care of patients to others have an ethical responsibility to ensure that those providing the care are appropriately trained and competent to provide the care they're being delegated to provide. Now, from my own experience in doing inquests and talking to other colleagues, many people delegated to provide asthma care have not had adequate training and do not have the skills or knowledge to manage asthma, especially those at risk who've just had an attack. And unfortunately, patients and parents attending a doctor's surgery have no idea whether the person that they're seeing has been adequately trained to deal with their or their child's asthma. Now coming to the whole point of this podcast, and that is a practical way to address the issue. I'm suggesting that we treat each and every asthma attack in general practice as a significant event. Arrange a meeting every two or three weeks, a one-hour meeting in the practice, to discuss these cases, treat the patients, and prevent future attacks. So in this way, all those that are managing asthma in a practice will be able to learn why their patients have had these attacks, and as a result of the analysis of the attack, modifiable risk factors will be identified and dealt with for those patients and this will help to reduce future attacks. Logically, or hopefully, this will lead to a change in the management of all patients with asthma in the general practice. There is a simple method that I've described in a recent podcast, and this is an approach for general practices to implement the process of assessing asthma attacks by setting up a significant event review say for an hour every few weeks. And this is called my seven-step plan and was described in podcast 51. I also did a YouTube lecture 
to further amplify this and plan to do another one with more detail. Now, links to this uh, um, page on my website is included in the description below. And if you follow the links within that page, you'll get to the podcasts and also the YouTube talk. In summary, This system involves identification and coding all those who've had asthma attacks, then allocating each of these people to a clinician to extract information, which can be extracted from the record onto a template form, which I've provided on my website, and then using this information to lead a discussion at the significant event review meeting. Actions can be decided upon at the meeting, appropriately appropriate delegation of a person to deal with these actions and the patient's care will be modified accordingly. Now this may involve ensuring that appropriate medication with a preventer is prescribed. It might involve reducing prescriptions for relievers for a particular patient. The relievers of course don't treat the underlying asthma and also by ensuring correct inhaler technique. Of course, the plan will also invite providing all with a personal asthma self-management plan and where necessary, those with possible severe asthma will be referred to a severe asthma clinic. So this is a simple plan which can be implemented. General practitioners are marvellous at implementing plans and getting around problems and dealing with issues in their practice. And what it will do is it will result in fewer attacks, so patient safety will be assured, the numbers of attacks and therefore unscheduled care will reduce, with reduced workload for primary and secondary care, and of course lots of money will be saved in reducing unscheduled care. So in summary, and thank you for getting this far in this podcast, in summary, an asthma attack is a signal that something serious has gone wrong, and importantly, most asthma attacks are preventable. Asthma outcomes in the United Kingdom continue to be appalling. The UK death rate in children and young people is still the highest in Europe. So a new approach is needed in the UK to reduce the numbers of preventable asthma attacks and deaths. Every single person who has an asthma attack should be regarded as having had a significant event because most of these are preventable and because they can and do cause harm. I've suggested a simple seven-step plan for UK general practices to learn about asthma management and as part of the process, change the way asthma is regarded and treated in the practice. And how will this help? Patient suffering will be reduced, GP and hospital workload will reduce, and general practitioners will be able to provide good quality evidence for their annual appraisal. Please do click the link to my seven-step plan for asthma in the description below and see how to stop the ongoing poor outcomes due to asthma.